Ken Lywood, undisclosed age at time of filming. He prefers his age to be a fluctuating number. Well, I'm this old, old enough to know better, yeah. The individuals featured in this series live alone but are not lonely. They are happy to go about their daily lives with purpose, feeling of accomplishment, and with a positive attitude. They have a healthy balance with themselves, nature, arts, music, and appear to be a mystery to all who see them from a distance. My search revealed that Ken was born April 5th, 1935. Well, conveniently, I'm not sure how old. A couple years ago, I started to get a little confused and then decided to foster the confusion. It, it's kind of convenient to exist in a gap of time. I'll drink to that. He attempted to hide his face so viewers visualize what his eyes were seeing instead. I thought, oh, maybe you should do the interview and never quite show my face. Never show more than, you know, the scope of my shoulders and what my eyes are seeing rather than what they look like. Ah, that could be nice, a little bit of mystery there. The interview with a man you never see. A man who lives alone and sees no one. And he only shows the world what his eyes see. Yeah, something like that. Ken Lywood is a unique, colorful, and talented visual artist living in a large home alone. He's very outspoken, charming, and extremely private. He's a deep thinker, a student of classical wisdom, and listens to opera. His art influences include Henry Matisse, Pablo Picasso, Claude Monet, Vincent van Gogh, and many of the classical giants. Seems that everything has a degree of influence on you. Usually it takes someone else to point it out. But right now, yeah, Ke uh, Keith Faring, I think, is influencing me right now. He's an American with a cartoon style. Michael Basquet was part of Andy Warhol's gang. They are influencing me because they, uh, they're outsider artists. They're not part of the traditional melange. This would be a good table to have a, a classic nude covered in fruit. <laughs> covered in fruit? Why covered at all? Twelve people nibbling on her, or him, or them or it. So what now, you're going to look me in the eye and ask me something? I don't know, you can, look, something? you can give me your full name, age, whatever you want. I'll start with my middle name because I don't get to hear it anymore. I haven't heard it since I would be bad and my mother would say, Kenneth Dalton Lywood. I long to hear those three words again. Now Dalton, maybe I made this up, but I don't think so. My my great-grandmother may have been a second cousin to the, one of the Dalton brothers, who were a famous gang. They kind of hung out with Jesse James. Hey, I came to Cape Britain looking for an old friend of mine from the Toronto. He disappeared. His name was Gerald McAdam. And, and I got drift that he'd gone to the Island of Women. I thought, well, I got to go there. I got to find that. And I thought, I gotta check this place out. And I was leaving the next morning to return to Toronto, and, and by chance, I drove by this little road here. And there was a small piece of land here, and, and I just plunked a little, pathetically small amount of money down, and, and um, it went from there. Westlake Ainsley, the Ballad of Westlake Ainsley, yeah. Like they say, if you're not born here, you're not from here. So, you know, I'm still not invited to many weddings. Well, you're, you're not a CFA, you're not a come from away. Yes, yes. You are? You're always a come from away. But it's not until you're coming over that bridge and you see the causeway that you, you kind of check yourself out to see how what level of response is, is uh, tickling your bones? I don't know where I belong. It's a small, small world. But, but this for you is I belong home. everywhere. You know, Dylan wrote one more song since that 
The next song he wrote <coughs> is called I Am Multitudes. I paint landscapes, I paint nudes, I am multitudes. When painting nudes, is it primarily female or male subjects? More female than male because it's a little more exciting for me to gaze on a naked woman than a naked man, but not that much more. Yeah, it depends. There's a sprinkling of males throughout my work, yep. How, how would you approach your subject? You know, how would you propose that they that they pose for you. How, how could you possibly get someone interested in posing nude? Well, that depends either it's a professional model or it's a studio setting with their other artists or as was the case last year, it's a woman you meet in a floppy hat in a laundromat. With a little luck, there are some people still out there who, who have a degree of fascination and regard for an artist. So when I told her I'm an artist, she, she got pleased with that and plus I pay her a little harder to get a model in Cape Breton it's a very conservative area it, but, it, uh, does it boil right down to a question of trust I guess you'd have to ask the model first of all I look like an artist I talk like an artist I act like an artist and I have my work all around me so they know I'm not just a pretender and that goes a long way and then they realize you have a certain degree of, I think it's called talent or ability, and uh, no one minds the thought of having their picture painted if, if they think it's going to be something that will excite them perhaps for the rest of their life as they get older and the picture doesn't. So many possibilities pertinent to the model and his artist, the, or, or the artist and his model. Oh, that's nice. I said the model and his artist. Yeah. On the topic of painting, trees, forests, women, nudes. I think the term might be genre painting, where you kind of paint what's around you. And uh, what's around me are trees. With the trees and the light, I realize it's awkward in the country. You live surrounded by wilderness, but you can't step more than 10 feet off the, the road for fear you get lost if you're... So, you know, you can step 15 feet off, off the road onto the trail and suddenly you're there. You're surrounded, enveloped by it. And the main thing the forest is, is, is a, a world of shifting light and shadow and everything is changing every minute, so you can't strap it down like a, like a still life and, and dwell on its infinite details. You, you have to capture its moments. As for women, truly, what is more beautiful? Maybe children, but children don't hold still. And with luck, you'll find the right model and, and uh, you have a rapport between you and, and it shows on the canvas. I don't know if this is it or not. I keep meaning to build a mobile with two or three lids. I think um, the uh, horns and cars are tuned to the key of F. Is that right? Someone said that well, you me. know, I'm always surprised how modern cars, how old fashioned modern car horn, horns sound. You think they'd be coming up with modern car horns. But my car, it's a RAV, so-called. I always feel guilty being that familiar with my RAV. And the horn sounds like it's like 50 years old on it. Your appreciation of classical music, Ken, is it because it's structured or because it survived the test of time? Why classical? You know, I don't know. It wasn't played in my house when I was a kid. It was all rhythm and blues. I, I lived near Detroit. It's very common for painters and musicians to hang out and the racetrack crowd. We were the only ones smoking dope back then. And uh, I painted the sets for the opera. So I'd be painting sets and listening to the, all the singers in the rehearsal rooms, practicing their roles. And that, that was lovely. I hung out in the world of rock for a few years traveling with the rock band and I was on the road for a couple of years with Alice Cooper so I 
I had a taste of that life for a bit. Yes, I, I spend the day alone. Yes, I get up when I want. Yes, I do whatever occurs to me, whenever it occurs to me. Yes, I'm lonely some days. Yes, I find company and wonder why I bothered. Yes, I love everyone. Yes, I know no one. Yes, I wander in my own mental world from dawn to dusk and live in the past because uh, you don't quite have a present when you're alone. Well, I have a studio and, and uh, you're lucky if you have a studio because uh, everything's where you laid it down. And once you're in there, the likelihood of being disturbed is, is minimalized. So I don't have to deal too much with disturbances. And I tend to be alone when I'm working, unless I'm working directly with a model. Some days I wish the studio was closer because, uh, well, when I built it, I had three kids in the house and I didn't want to be bothered by them. But if you attach your studio to your house, you've far less heating and far less shoveling to keep both centers of operation going. Do you prefer working on a larger or smaller scale? The irony is, uh, big or small, it's the same degree of uh, effort and consideration goes into it. And the fact that paintings are still priced in a, to some degree in accordance with their size uh, is ironic. Yeah, the, the advantage of a big painting, you can s put yourself right in it like a dancer. With a small painting, it's more of a spinning top or something. I've never attempted to do what are strictly referred to as miniatures. You know, where some guy will, God, I saw a lead pencil, and they'd sharpen the lead coming out of the pencil to look like a locomotive. Unbelievable. I There's so many examples of artists whose work depends on, on, on a minuscule attention to details, and it, it can be fascinating. It's never quite my cup of tea, though. What do you see the future holding? What, what direction are you going next? I'm slowly walking backwards these days. I'll let you know next time we talk. Ken, I want to thank you for your time and your... Well, you're welcome. Thank you for your interest.